Warning. This video and all other videos on this channel are for entertainment purposes only. The content of this video and all other videos on this channel are the opinions of the creator only and do not constitute legal, trading, investment or financial advice of any kind. Investing carries a high level of risk and the majority of retail clients lose money. Do not invest any capital unless you understand the risks and you are prepared to lose it all. Alright, uh, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and I've got a few announcements. First of all, I understand a bunch of you are quite frustrated with the disclaimers. Believe me, no one's more frustrated with me, okay? But... If you want to go and read all 47 pages of this FCA document, by all means do it. And if upon finishing the 47 pages, you can come to the conclusion that what I'm doing is completely unnecessary, please DM me, let me know, because as far as I can tell, these disclaimers must go at the start and YouTubers that are not doing this are just simply out of compliance, right? Now, again, please feel free to go and read this stuff and let me know that I have misinterpreted this. But just so you know how silly this thing is, okay? A meme that constitutes non-compliant crypto asset promotion. Look at this. Okay, <laughs> now maybe it's overkill, okay? But if not, then I'm only asking you to put up with a 10 second disclaimer a couple of times in the video, okay? Now I know one or two of you have had to unsubscribe for that, but to those people I say good riddance. For everyone else, okay, please just allow 10 seconds of disclaimers so that I don't have to face up to two years in prison and an unlimited fine or both, okay? So just cut me a little bit of slack, please, okay? I <laughs> I'm doing my best here. I'm doing my best here. Like I said, by all means, read the 47 pages and then come back and tell me that what I'm doing is unnecessary. Now, I'm going to answer this question today. Why is it going down? This is the current chart. We've got this thing at the hard right edge. Why is it going down? Everyone seems to want to know why it's going down. We're going to talk about that. First, I've got a couple of announcements, okay? In case you missed it, we're going on CPM's channel. It's going to be released to you on Sunday. So please go and subscribe to him. He also has a very generous Bitcoin giveaway ready for when he hits 500 subscribers. And frankly, one in 500 chances of winning some Bitcoin. That's not too bad at all, is it? Cobra Stacker is going to be joining us as well. So please come and subscribe to both of those guys. Show them some love and tune in on Sunday to CPM's channel. The last announcement before we move on is... I have a P.O. box. I've got P.O. box for a few months, so send me something. I'll appreciate it. Yesterday, I hopped on a live stream. So if you haven't seen that, go and see that. The, one of the biggest questions was, of course, why is it going down? <laughs> okay, why is it going down? Why are we having a pullback? I thought we were just going up only forever. So like I said, we're going to answer this. Another big question we saw come up repeatedly was when alt season? And as it turns out, Tony the Bull might have the answer for you guys, okay? The total two has just illustrated, has just printed a golden cross tells us to keep an open mind about potentially seeing an alt season walking forward sentiment has been in the gutter particularly for the crypto related stocks the crypto related equities and the miners such as marathon and another question that came up over and over again in the live stream was what happens to the crypto stocks after the halving well just a friendly reminder that this is what marathon did post 2020 halving okay here's the halving and then marathon did bitcoin things we are approaching the halving rapidly if history is to repeat and i'm not saying that it will but if it does tells us to keep an open mind about some insane price action walking forward this is why i remain bullish until i am stopped out when we lose the critical support levels so camel why then is it going down why do we continue to go down well largely it's because we've been going up non-stop for many, many months. I think we're on something like seven or eight potential green consecutive monthly candle closes. And there's a lot of fear out there. Remember, every dip has its narrative. The markets love to append a narrative to every single dip. And one such narrative at the moment is that the US government has been transferring around $2 billion worth of Bitcoin to Coinbase that they seized from Silk Road, potentially about to dump that on the market. But to that I say, likely that'll get hoovered up by the ETFs in no time. The key take home here is sentiment is being drained out of this space very rapidly right around all time highs and you could not ask for more. OK, markets do not like to fly on extreme greed. They like to top on extreme greed. They much prefer to fly and climb a wall of worry. That is seemingly what we are setting up. We are flushing the sentiment, resetting it, ready for that final leg to the upside. I have here a Bitcoin CME chart. And on the daily, you can see we have this little gap here. Let me highlight that for you just to be clear between here and here. And if I zoom right in, you can see, let me get a box, It'd be easier to illustrate with a box. Here's the CME gap right in this neighborhood. And as you can see at the hard right edge, we have now closed the CME gap. So we're running out of excuses not to find at least a short term bottom and get some relief to the upside. I think Cred here nails it. Morning, folks. Are you guys ready to run it back to the highs? He knows he is. I think I am too. I think seeing some kind of relief here, some kind of push back up, perhaps to take the short liquidations out that are sat somewhere between 72 and 74k and then perhaps we can t entertain either a rollover or a push off higher if of course we see a rollover in this neighborhood 
we are vulnerable to seeing a total of two months consolidation cycle as we were talking about on the live stream yesterday if i pull up my standard chart you can see taking the highs doing something like this and then rolling over would set us up for a 60-day consolidation cycle before then we can move higher however there's always a chance that we break out here recover this upper slip and blue support line and off we go before the next cycle low as ever open to all outcomes, taking things one day at a time, no bias, no emotion, letting the charts and the TA guide us. Nice chart here from my brother Nasco. This week will be exceptionally important as we've seen a breakout above the resistance. The question now is whether it can sustain and continue the current uptrend. Currently, we are observing significant support coming in. The price has, as you can see, it goes back to that stupid meme chart. Where is it? Why is it going down? You know, the thing is hardly moved relative to the strong uptrend. And you can see that here from Nasco's chart, right? We've had this big uptrend. This current flush, this current crash that people are terming it is merely a move move into a strong support zone which currently is holding now doesn't preclude a move lower okay but so far we have taken the liquidity that's what nasco is talking about here we've had the liquidity accumulation right they've taken all of the long stops indicating that we probably are going to see a move to the upside and then like i was saying just a minute ago the big question for me at least is do we run the highs and then have to consolidate for two months or do we just blast off here and leave all the panic sellers and the doubters in disbelief Tony the Bull here points out the CME futures just touched down on the upper monthly Bollinger Bands. This is a daily chart that Tony applies a monthly Bollinger Band to. You can see the monthly Bollinger Band here in blue. And notice how price came straight into that and has so far is holding above it. And another great chart here from Tony the Bull that perhaps puts this consolidation into a little bit of context. You can see down the bottom, 2016, 2017, we had this very similar structure. We did an A, B, C, D, E, and then off we went. We did the exact same thing in 2020, very similar structure. We did an A, B, C, D, E, and then off we went. And at the top, 2024, today's chart, we got a very similar structure again, A, B, C, looking perhaps for D and E before resumption to the upside. Notice how, again, the whole Elliott wave idea shows confluence with a 60-day consolidation cycle approximately, if indeed that is to occur. A lot of stars seem to be aligning for either the bottom being close or some kind of sideways chop for a couple of months. As ever, we'll take it one day at a time, continue to stay on top of it. Yesterday, we also had some macro data. We had some jobs come out. And if you believe the data, then the labor market's not doing too bad, more or less in line with expectations. But again, I'd like to point at U3, okay? U3 measures the number of people who are jobless but actively seeking employment. And as I know I've already shown once before, we have seen a jump from 3.4 to 3.9% for U3. And you can see that here. The reason this is so significant is because the SAM recession indicator signals the start of a recession when the three-month moving average for the national unemployment rate, U3, rises by 0.50 percentage points or more relative to its low in the previous 12 months. So this is something that is developing quite rapidly. It's also, as I said, something that goes quite against the grain or quite against the mainstream narrative that's being fed to us. And it's certainly something I wanna be keeping an eye on going forward. And again, as we were discussing in the live stream yesterday, all of this kind of fits with this idea that we're going to get a continued blow off top that culminates in some kind of global recession and deflationary bust. That is asset price deflation. One day at a time, as always, notice how the dollar still breaking out has yet to fail its breakout, has yet to invalidate the current breakout at the hard right edge. So it's going to be an interesting few weeks, that is for sure. We're also seeing perhaps the end of this current daily cycle not too far away now. Okay, we are on currently something like day 28 of an expected 40-ish day cycle for the S&P 500. So it doesn't preclude a little more push to the upside, but then I think we are going to get that rollover. I suspect that rollover brings me back down to the point at which we jumped out of this trade. And then we'll be looking to reload and perhaps go again one final time. I was letting the members know in the members section yesterday that the Dow Jones is firing warning signs, right? Now, if it can recover this trend line, we'll continue to push. But if we start to see lower lows relative to yesterday's lows, then that for me might be a sign to take some of this position off, at least if not all of it. I'll probably take all of it off to be completely honest. And the Russell 2K also thinking about thinking about firing some warning signs here. So we'll see, right? For now, long and strong continue to push. I do like the fact that we've left behind the range and have broken from the range. That's wholly positive as far as I can tell. The breakout in gold is starting to look more and more like it's for real isn't it so i know a lot of people are quick to sort of mock and jeer at this and say that it's irrelevant but believe me they're going to become buyers at some point it's a matter of time and i know it's silver also starting to take part in this rally so a quick snap 230 bucks is probably something i would expect to see in the not too distant future bitcoin is the same old same old really isn't it as i said all the while we're above the cycle low then we have not failed a cycle we've not closed below that and thus i expect an overall uptrend to continue in the price of bitcoin failing that like i said if we run these highs and then kind of roll over by the time we get to around here like say the 15th of april we if we haven't 
pushed off strongly, then we should be able to say with a pretty high degree of confidence that we are going to spend the rest of this 60 day cycle in a consolidation cycle, as I've shown you a bunch of times, as the Elliott wave theory kind of lines up with. And something else I've shown a bunch of times is this is pretty typical price action for Bitcoin. It often likes to undergo these 60 day consolidation cycles, get to that cycle low, and then it goes off on a tear. So is that something we're going to see? I wonder if Bitcoin is going to chop around for two months whilst the S&P has to find that cycle low, which may or may not be the weekly cycle as well as the daily cycle. I also put out a video for the members yesterday covering the crypto related equities. And I said, look, they're firing warning signs because they're starting to break down. But as ever, we don't panic sales the moment they break down. We give them a little bit of space. We let the price action come to us. That's a big thing at the moment I'm seeing is people are trying to force a lot of trades, right? Don't be forcing your trades. Let the market come to you. Let the price come to you. And then when you get your high probability set up with the odds in your favor, you can take it with a well-managed risk as always. For now, be really interested to see if this is breakdown retest resumption of the blue line or whether we're going to recover this and kind of continue to chop around. It's the same deal with MicroStrategy. Notice that we, we wick the line, right? But we're right back above it, at least at the implied open. So long and strong continue to push there. Riot as well, right into what look where the horizontal blue support line so far bouncing off. So we're going to see and marathon again, right? Right into the blue range break zone. We're going to see, right? Long and strong continue to push. The stop is the stop for a reason. That is where we start to get true technical breakdowns. All the while we're not stopped out, then I remain bullish and I don't really care because the risk is managed. So as ever, we continue to take this one day at a time. We'll continue to do our best to stay on the right side of the market with no bias, no emotion, and just let the TA guide us. So that's it from me. I hope you're doing well in life. Until next time, take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.